Okay, thank, thank you for the uh, introduction. And uh, I would like to thank the organizer for, for the invitation to talk here. And today I'm going to talk about the birational boundaries of uh, singular log final three fourths. And yeah, it's uh, a similar topic as uh, Gabriel's talk. And uh, so, so I, I will talk, uh, my, my talk is uh, over C. And uh, we always consider X is a, a normal projective variety. And we consider a, a boundary divisor, which is uh, effective uh, Q divisor, such that uh, this uh, Kx plus B is Q cartier. And uh, we, uh, we define the log final pair. So, so this pair x, b is log final. So if uh, we have this minus kx plus b example. Okay, and then I, I will define the uh, singularities we are interested in. So it's uh, just a epsilon KLT singularities, as you uh, heard from Gabriel's talk. So, so we we take a log resolution here. So this f is log resolution, and then we can write this uh, ky equals to the pullback of kx plus b plus some divisors. So for some i. And, and we fix some epsilon between uh, 0 and 1, uh, a real number. Then, then we, can, uh, we can define that uh, this uh, pair x, b is epsilon Kamata log terminal. So if uh, all this ai is larger than minus 1 plus epsilon. And uh, so, so as, as a easy remark, so we, we know that, so in the boundary case, I mean, so zero KRT is just uh, KRT in the usual sense. And uh, one KRT is a, a terminal, uh, but uh, plus the boundary is zero. So, so this is, uh, uh, two basic singularities in binary geometry. So, so this is a kind of generalization, and uh, we are interested in so such kind of variety, such kind of pair with with such kind of singularities. So we define the following. So, so we say that uh, X is of epsilon final type. So, so I will write epsilon F T for short. So if uh, there exists such boundary with these properties, so, so there exists some B such that this is uh, epsilon uh, KRT log final. Okay. Okay, so, the, uh, so we are interested in so-called uh, uh, BAB conjecture. So, so by uh, Boris of brothers and Alexif. So, uh, so it says that actually uh, such kind of varieties uh, are bounded. So, so that means if we fix a uh, dimension and we fix an epsilon between zero and one, then we have the set of X such that uh, uh, x is epsilon final type and the dimension n is bounded. So, so this is uh, one of the most interesting uh, conjectures in binary geometry. And I think uh, Gabriel used, uh, also used it in, in his talk. And, uh, uh, so, but but of course, this is uh, very hard. So I I'm interested in a weak version of this conjecture. So as the title suggest, su suggested, 
So we are, uh, I'm interested in the bidirectional boundedness. So, 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 so let me write this. So I will call it uh, bidirectional BAB. So if we replace this boundedness to bidirectional boundedness, uh, bi bidirectionally bounded. So, uh, and also we, we are interested in another conjecture related to BAB conjecture. So, so it's just, uh, we, we are interested in the boundings of the anti-canonical volume. So, so it's called a uh, weak BAB conjecture. And uh, so it says that uh, if we fix this N, and we fix epsilon in 0 and 1, then there should exist some number m. So exist some number m, which depends only on this n and epsilon, uh, such that, so if we consider, uh, if we consider, so this x is epsilon final type of dimension n, then the anti-canonical volume minus kx is bounded from above by this number. Yeah, so this, so, so basically I'm interested in these two conjectures, uh, these three conjectures. And uh, uh, I, I, I will, I, I will uh, explain some, uh, some known results. So first, uh, as a, as a trivial remark, so of course we know that uh, this uh, weak BAB and bidirectional BAB are just consequence of BAB. So, and uh, for BAB conjecture, we actually we know uh, not so much. So we know that BAB is. Uh, okay for uh, dimension two. So that's a uh, result by Alexiev in 94. Uh, but unfortunately, it is still open for uh, dimension high, higher dimension. But so of course, there are a lot of uh, partial results uh, on this, uh, on the boundaries of a final varieties. And uh, and for for weak BAB, we know that we know that of course it is uh, okay for n equals to two, again by 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 BAB in dimension two. But uh, we also know that there is a, a we can compute the optimal number for for this number m two epsilon. So in in weak BAB. So this is uh, by myself. Uh, and and uh, then I proved uh, it's for dimension three. So uh, this is, yeah. but it is still open in dimension higher. And uh, for bidirectional BAB, So actually, uh, this uh, in dimension two it is trivial. So this is uh, so trivially true in dimension two. I mean, even even without the assumption that epsilon larger than zero. So actually, the. Uh, the, the reason is uh, very easy because uh, if we consider X is uh, epsilon, I mean, uh, final type surface, then we can actually show that X is rational. So that means uh, birational to P2. So, so we can just, uh, uh, so, so in the birational family, there's only one point. We can, we can uh, show that every, yeah, every this variety bidirectional to P two, but uh, so so you may think that uh, this is uh, also true. I mean, 
also trivial for higher dimension, but uh, uh, actually this is not. So, so however, in dimension three, three and higher, so dimension three and higher, uh, we must assume the assume this epsilon uh, sorry, larger than zero. So this is uh, actually due to some counterexamples. So, so counterexamples uh, by Lin uh, in 2004 and uh, uh, Okada in 2009. So, so in, in his paper, he, he constructs counterexamples in dimension three. And the Okada constructed a counterexample in dimension six and higher, and then he generalized it to three and higher. So, so actually, that, that tells us that uh, uh, at least a bivariational version of BAB is, uh, is not, uh, not as trivial as, as in dimension two. So I, I think uh, this, I mean, this conjecture is uh, some good, good subject to, to, to investigate. I mean, in order to give uh, some idea improving, improving the whole BAB connection. So, so today, today's main, uh, main topic is just uh, to show, uh, show the idea of uh, birational BAB in dimension three. Okay. And also I, I want to remark uh, that uh, so recently there there's a, a preprint by by Birka. so he claimed the following theorem so he claimed the following theorem says that uh, if we assume by, uh, BAB in dimension n minus uh, one so assume then we can get a weak BAB in dimension n and uh, Again, uh, and also we can get uh, birational BAB in dimension n. So, so, so then in he, uh, he, so that means he, we already know BAB in dimension two, and uh, so he gave new proof for weak BAB and birational BAB in dimension three. Yeah, so, so, but, but my, uh, so his approach is, uh, is different from mine. So, so I, I hope, uh, I hope I can. Uh, give you some ideas of the of the proof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, no, no. Actually, so so this is uh, I mean his uh, so this this is uh, very hard. I mean he proved uh, something makes this uh, a consequence. But uh, so he proved that uh, so there exists some some R so such that uh, minus uh, R K X it gives a birational map. So by by this this becomes a consequence. But this is a very hard uh, theorem. Yeah. Okay. So let me see. Yeah. Uh, okay. So so now I'm going to. Uh, to to explain the proof of the uh, of the birational BAB in dimension three, and uh, so so first I I'm going to uh, explain the reduction step to modify space. So I, actually this, this is very similar to to Gabriel's uh, talk uh, his first uh, step. So actually we have this proposition. So, but slightly different. So, so we have this uh, proposition says that if we, we start from X, which is the epsilon final type, then we can find some, so we can, there exists some birational map. So this is uh, yeah, basically by uh, running MMP. We can get some X prime with, to T. And this X prime is again epsilon final type, so with the same epsilon. And uh, this part is a uh, modifiable space.
but but uh, here I, I need to remark that actually my definition of multifibrous space is different. So so I only consider the very naive multifibrous space. That 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 means so so first we consider this. Uh, of course, this is a uh, uh, contraction. And second, so this is the uh, uh, most important condition. So, so we assume that x prime is actually q factorial and the terminal. So, so, so this this is uh, what I mean by by not naive. Yeah. So, and uh, uh, third is uh, is a minus k x prime is ample over t. And the fourth is uh, pick a num relative pick a number uh, is one. And the uh, fifth is the dimension of uh, x is strictly larger than dimension of t. Yeah, so, so please remember that in my talk, multifiber space always means uh, q factorial and the terminal one. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm not going to explain the proof of this. Uh, but uh, it, it is quite easy. Okay, so so by this proposition, we know that uh, so if you want to consider the bounding uh, birational boundaries, you only need to consider this part. I mean, birationally. But, uh, 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 also, I uh, we have another condition that so the volume of minus k is strictly smaller than the volume of minus kx prime. So by this step, you can see that if we want to consider birational BAB or weak BAB, we only need to consider this very special x prime because uh, it's have bigger volume and uh, uh, it's also in the birational uh, equivalence class. So, so that, that means uh, we, 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 we need to show the uh, boundedness for this part. So, so by this pro proposition, actually, we, we have we know that uh, there are uh, we have two advantages. So, so first is uh, uh, we have the better singularities. So, so we we have uh, Q factorial and terminal. And the second uh, se second is uh, actually we have this additional structure, so this multifiber space structure. So we actually, we can make use of this, uh, th this structure to, to prove the, actually the boundedness. So, so this is uh, today's main theorem. So, so we consider in dimension three, so we fix epsilon in zero and one. Then we consider this set X such that uh, X is epsilon final type uh, in dimension uh, three, and uh, there there exists some fi uh, multifiber space structure on X. So for such X, we can show that it is actually bounded. And uh, by, by this main theorem, of course, we, we know that uh, weak BAB and uh, birational BAB in dimension three hold. Yeah. So, so this is uh, the main theorem. Okay, so let, let's see what happens in in dimension three. So, so from now on, we assume that uh, so so we consider such x. So actually, there are three cases. So depending on the dimension of t. So so the when the dimension of t is zero, so the, we know that x is actually uh, q factorial and terminal and uh, final three four. Uh, with pick a number one. 
actually, this case is already proved by, by Kawamata. So, so this is bounded. Uh, in 92. So we don't need to worry about, about this case. But uh, uh, the following two cases, we know very little, I mean, for the boundaries. So first is when the dimension is 1, then we have actually uh, x to t. Then in this time, t must be a rational curve. So this is a del pedal fibration. And uh, when dimension t is 2, we know that uh, x to t is a conic bundle. Yeah, but uh, uh, we, we know nothing. I mean, we know very little about the boundaries of such kind of uh, varieties. So, so today I am going to explain this part. So for, for simplicity. So. So as, uh, as Gabriel mentioned that to prove the boundaryness, we only need to find, we only need to find some, uh, some very ample divider. So, so I, I, will, I will explain here. So uh, to prove that the set of x is bounded. So we need to, to find some uh, Cartier divider uh, H on X such that so first is uh, uh, this H is very ample and second is we have a boundaries of the volume of H so so there exists some V so this is independent of x. So th this is uh, just a standard idea. But the question is, uh, so how, how, how do we find this edge? So, so, uh, so we know that, we know that, uh, so minus, uh, so, so now we, uh, we consider the second case. So, so we always assume that uh, x uh, is epsilon final type threefold, and uh, x to p1 is a, a, a multifiber space. So, so we take f to be a journal fiber. OK, okay so, so note that uh, by definition of multifiber space, we know that minus k is ample over p1. So that means we can always add, add fibers to make it to be ample. So minus kx plus some fiber mf is ample for, for m large enough. And then if you, uh, you take some multiple to make it uh, Cartier and to make it very ample, we, we actually we can take that h to be some multiple of minus kx plus mf. So, so with uh, r large enough and uh, su sufficiently divisible. But so the question is that, uh, of course, this could be very ample. But we don't know that uh, if we can bound this volume. So, so the question is that uh, we need to bound to bound this volume, h cube. And to bound this uh, h cube is uh, uh, almost equivalent to that we need actually to bound this m and this r. So they can not be too large. So bound this m and bound this r. So in, in particular, we, we need to bound uh, uh, at least the Cartier index of minus kx. Yeah, so this is. So then, then the following, I, I, I will just uh, state 
the the following theorem. So, which says that actually we we can we can find a uniform M and a uniform R such that this is uh, very ample. So, theorem says that. Uh, so if we fix epsilon in zero and one, then uh, and we can see, then there exists number uh, n, which depends on epsilon, and the number v, and the number r. Uh, so we, we may assume that they are all integers, such that, so if we consider this x is epsilon final type, uh, threefold, with a modifier uh, structure. So if we consider such x, the, uh, and the f is a journal fiber, then we can conclude that uh, first we know minus kx uh, plus n times f is ample. So this n does not depend on x, but only depends on epsilon. And second is uh, uh, the volume is bounded to cube, uh, bounded by this v. And the third is uh, the uh, Gorenstein index, this r times kx uh, is cut here. So, so th this is enough to conclude that uh, uh, this x is bounded. Uh, because, uh, so here we, we need one more step to, to prove the, uh, the very ampleness of the, so, so I will say, so, so this three implies that at least uh, r times minus kx plus n f is cut here and ample. Then by product class, uh, effective based on freeness. So um, effective point three. We know that in this is in dimension three. So actually we can take H to be like this multiple of this. And then this is very ample. Uh, of course, cut here. And, and then uh, also by this, uh, the third conclusion, we know that uh, uh, a, a, h cube is smaller than this cube times v. So, so we have a very ample divider with a boundedness, uh, with a bounded volume, and then we are, we, are, we are done. So this implies the main theorem. Okay. So, so, so then I, I'm going to explain, uh, uh, I, I want to say a little bit more about uh, uh, this case. So in this case, actually, we need to replace this f uh, to, be, to be a pullback of a very ample divisor on T. But um, in that case, uh, we also need to, uh, so, so we need some boundaries on T. And that is uh, okay by, in this case, by a result of Birka. So, so basically, uh, the, the proofs are, 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 are the same. So I, I mean, in, in the uh, second case. Okay, so. So then let, let me e explain the, the proof of, uh, of this theorem. So, so, so uh, I will first explain the second one. Uh, this is uh, the easiest one. So, so in this case, we consider the minus kx plus n times f. So assume that we already have this n. 
so we have this volume. And uh, we can show that uh, this volume is bounded by the volume of minus kx uh, plus 3 times n uh, times the volume of minus kf here. And, uh, and then note that in this case, f is just a smooth uh, del pedal surface. So that means this part is smaller than 9. And also, this part is bounded by uh, m3 epsilon. So this is uh, uh, by weak BAB in dimension 3. So, so, so then we, we know that uh, so we can take v to be m plus, three, uh, plus uh, 27n if we find this n. And this is uh, by uh, depends only on epsilon. So then we are done. Okay, so, 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 so this is just the, the second part. And uh, then we are going to consider the uh, first part. So first part, we want to show that minus kx plus some n times f is, is ample. So, so there exists such n. Uh, so this is equivalent to show that uh, we, we consider the intersection uh, with, with the extreme array. So we consider that uh, uh, minus kx plus n f times r larger than zero. So for arbitrary r, which is the uh, uh, extreme array of the effective cone of x. So, so in this case, x is final type. So, so we know that every this extreme array is generated by some curve. So, so we can write uh, this to be c. So actually, we, we want to compute the intersection number of minus k with c. So, so the thing is, we consider, uh, so if this uh, C is contracted by F, so, so C is contracted by, by F, then we know that, uh, so, so since minus K is uh, uh, ample over, over P1, so, so we already know that minus K times C is larger than zero. So there's nothing to prove. I mean, uh, for arbitrary n, uh, this inequality holds. So we, we, we don't need to care about uh, uh, curves contracted by f. So, so we now we we'll suppose that, um, suppose that uh, c dominates p1. So in this case, we know that uh, c times f is uh, always a positive integer. So then it is enough to show that to show that uh, minus kx times c is larger than some minus n. So for there exists some uh, lower bound, negative lower bound for this number uh, for every r which is which generate by c. Mm, which is an extreme array. So, so here, uh, I want to say is that we only need to show show this C for one generator. No, 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 of course, we cannot show it for all C. So we, we can choose a generator such that this holds, then it's okay. Uh, so, so I should say there exists some generator such that this holds. So, uh, so actually, this is uh, not uh, not easy. So, uh, but uh, I want to recall the uh, the, the theorem of uh, length of extreme array. So this is related to the intersection number of of canonical divisor with some curve. So. So, 
So it says that if we have, uh, uh, so I, I will write here. So it says that if we take y and the delta to be a K, KLT pair, and we consider r to be a kx, uh, ky plus delta negative uh, extreme array, then we can conclude that there exists some c, which is a rational curve. And uh, such that uh, this C generates generates this uh, uh, this R, and uh, so we have this intersection number minus k x uh, minus k y plus delta times C smaller than uh, or equals to two of the dimension of y. So so this is equivalent to say, of course, this is. Equivalent to say that uh, k uh, so k y plus delta times c larger than minus two of the dimension of y. So 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 we we want to use this kind of inequality to to show the existence of such c such that we have this inequality. But it, as you can see that the 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 sign here and uh, the minus k here. Is uh, opposite, so we, we, we need to we need to uh, do something to to apply length of extreme rays to our situation. So actually, the the trick is is like this. Uh, so 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 we 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 recall that we have this x and b which is epsilon KRT and log final. Then we can write this minus KX uh, as uh, two dividers. So, so one is one over T uh, KX plus B, uh, plus one plus TB. And another is uh, uh, minus one plus T over T uh, KX plus B. So if you uh, consider the intersection number, I mean, suppose that we have this C, so this C. Then this part is uh, example by, by definition. So, so we, we know that this part is larger than one over T. So, so this T is some, some, positive, some, positive, in, uh, some positive real number, one plus T, B. So then, uh, times c. Then you can see that this part is very, this uh, intersection number is very similar to the the form in 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 this length of extreme rays. So so we we want to use use this to give a lower bound of uh, this intersection number, and then we are we are done. Right. So so th then the, we know that so so suppose so this is. Suppose that uh, suppose that uh, this pair x one plus t b is KRT, uh, or even log canonical. Then then we can apply this length of extreme array to give that. Uh, so we can find such c generate uh, this r such that uh, this is larger than larger than. Uh, to uh, this is minus six because we are in dimension three now, so this is minus six t, and uh, we want to take it to be minus n. But uh, here comes uh, the most serious problem: is that uh, this is not always KLT. I mean, of course, uh, for t enough small, I mean very close to zero, this is KLT. But the problem is that we want to take this n to be a constant, which does not depend on epsilon. That means this t cannot be 
too small. At least uh, it should be independent of, of x. So, so the problem is, so, so I will keep this. Uh, so the question is that uh, can we choose this t uniformly, uh, independent of x, such that this is KRT? So is there exist, uh, does there exist uh, uh, t larger than zero? Uh, so independent, uh, I mean, depend only on epsilon. Epsilon, such that uh, this x1 plus t b is KRT for arbitrary x b, which is uh, uh, epsilon KRT and log final. Uh, so, so here uh, is straightforward. We 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 consider dimension dimension three, but of course you can ask this question for arbitrary, arbitrary n, but this t should be depends on n and epsilon. Uh, so, so I have so two remarks uh, here. So the so first is that uh, actually we cannot remove this, this log final condition. So, so I mean, so log final is necessary. In, in this question, uh, so so uh, I mean this is not uh, not a local uh, question. So so it really depends on this global condition, and the second is that uh, actually uh, we don't know this question. Uh, this is true. So. Uh, this question is true for dimension three, I mean higher. But uh, uh, so, so, so we, we, this argument is, uh, is uh, uh, not, does not work, at least uh, for now. But uh, the, the, the thing is that uh, actually we, we can prove a dimension two version of that question and we can apply it in this case. So, so the thing is, we can prove the following theorem. Says that if we uh, assume f is uh, so f b f, this is a uh, uh, epsilon k l t log uh, final. So, so actually log delta zero, but uh, yeah, anyway, log final surface. And uh, we assume that uh, f is uh, smooth delta zero. Uh, this, this, this condition is not necessary, but it's uh, enough for our application because here any f is smooth delta zero. So for this, then uh, f and one plus lambda b f is KRT. So so here so there exists some lambda larger than zero. So uh, depends on only on epsilon. With with this with this uh, property. Okay, so how we uh, relate uh, the surface case to this question? So so this is a theorem, and now we go back to X. Actually, we 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 consider the non kt center of non kt locus of this X one plus lambda b. So of course we don't know if this pair is. KLT or not. If, if it, is, it is KLT, then we use lambda here and we are done. So, so we, we consider the non-KLT part of it. And by this, uh, by this theorem, if we restrict to the journal fiber, then this is uh, KLT. So that means the non-KLT part uh, is uh, maps to points, so by F in P1. And uh, uh, then actually we know that so since uh, so since we know that uh, R is generated so so by by that uh, sorry I, I erase this but we, we assume that R times F is larger than zero so that means uh, 
So R is not contained in this non carriage center. Uh, by, by this R, I mean every curve generate, generating R not contained, is not contained in this non carriage center. So then, then actually we can, we can generalize the uh, extreme, uh, length of extreme area a little bit more to, to show that uh, this case is enough to use use uh, our uh, length of extreme array. So here we we can we can generalize it to this. So so we can remove this condition, but we add that uh, R is not contained in a non KRT of Y delta, and then this still holds. So this is a not so difficult generalization, and then we can. Uh, we can directly uh, use it for this case, so we don't need this. And uh, we can take uh, t to be lambda, and then we are done. Uh, by, yeah, by length of extreme ray, we, we have this, this kind of inequality. Yeah, so this, this is uh, the proof of the first, uh, uh, first part of the theorem. So, so we find uh, some uniform n such that it is uh, ample. Yeah, I also I need to remark that this theorem is based on based on uh, Alexiev's proof of uh, BAB in dimension two, but but it's not. I, I don't think it is a trivial consequence of uh, BAB in dimension two. So it takes some some uh, 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 some some effort to, to prove this theorem, I think. Okay, so now, uh, okay. So, so let's go to the third part. Uh, so we want to show that uh, uh, R, my, uh, R, I mean, so we actually, we want to bound uh, Rx, which is the uh, Grandstein index. Uh, so this part uh, is heavily depends on the classification of terminal singularities. So uh, I, I'm not sure if, uh, I, I don't think this can be generalized to higher dimension. So, so I should remark, so uh, heavily depends on classification of uh, terminal singularities. in dimension three. Okay, so in this case, uh, we, we consider uh, X is, uh, of course, epsilon final type. And uh, so, so of course it is terminal. I mean, by, uh, by the uh, definition of multifiber space, terminal three, four. So then we can write actually the virtual basket of singularities. So as uh, Ri and Bi. So, so this is the local, local index uh, of quotient singularity. So then this, uh, to bound Rx, we only need to bound uh, this Ri. So, uh, uh, so enough to show that uh, Ri is bounded. So, so this uh, is related. So, so here I, I need to recall the. Uh, so I need to recall the Obifold Riemann Roch formula. So. So, so this is only the special case. So we know that two, uh, 24 times chi O, which is just 24, uh, because we, we, we are working on final type variety. So this is equal to the minus kx times c2 of x uh, plus the sigma of ri minus 1 over ri for arbitrary i. So by this formula, so to bound, uh, I mean to bound Ri, 
uh, I mean, uh, we only need to bound this part by, uh, from above. So that means we need to bound this part. So enough to show that. So this part minus kx times c2 is uh, bounded from above, uh, from below, by some number, which depends only on epsilon. Then we are done. And actually, this idea comes from the proof of uh, uh, boundedness of uh, final threefold with terminal singularities and or canonical singularity. So, so I uh, recall that. Uh, so in um, Kamata's proof, he showed that minus kx times c2 x is positive. So for arbitrary x is uh, q factorial and uh, terminal and uh, final reward of pika number one. And then later, uh, Kola, Kola, Miyaoka, Molly, uh, and Tagaki So they show that this holds for, uh, this is uh, non-negative for arbitrary x is canonical uh, final threefold. So here we, uh, I want to use, uh, you use this approach. Actually, uh, they proved that so this is implied by the uh, pseudo-effectivity of C2. So they, by proving that C2 is pseudo-effective, effective, and in this case, minus k is ample. So we know that uh, this is uh, non-negative. Okay. So, so here, uh, Here we, we also want to, to show some kind of pseudo effectivity for this train, uh, second chain number. And uh, we want to show that uh, the, uh, such kind of inequality holds and we are done. So, so the thing is that we need to use, uh, we need to use two uh, theorems. Uh, first is by, uh, by Miyaoka. So, so he showed that if we assume that x is uh, uh, normal variety and smooth in co-dimension two, and uh, uh, epsilon is a torsion-free uh, shift, and assume that first, so so assume. The first is uh, we have the first train class of of the, this E is uh, uh, NAF and uh, Q, Q Cartier. And the second is uh, assume that this E is generically, generically NAF. So this just means uh, restricting, uh, restricting on Generic, generical curves, this E is an F. So, so I'm go not going to explain uh, the definition in more detail. So, so then we can, by these two, we can conclude that second number of E is uh, pseudo-effective. Uh, this is uh, Miyaoka's uh, theorem. And then I recall another theorem from uh, KMMT. So actually, in that uh, paper, they prove the following. So, so, so in this case, if we want to show the pseudo effectivity of C two, actually this this condition is uh, uh, much harder to check. So, but uh, in that paper, actually uh, they pro pro provide a method to check if a uh, shift. I mean, the tangent bundle is uh, generically naive. So, so the, pr the theorem is like, if we assume that 
So say x b is a funnel. So log funnel. Uh, I mean log funnel k with KLT singularity. And uh, uh, so x is smooth in co-dimension 2. Uh, in this case, we have x is uh, terminal. So, so this is OK. Then we conclude that uh, t, the tangent bundle is generically naff. So, uh, and then if, uh, so if the tangent bundle, C1 of tangent bundle is minus k, if this is naff, then we can conclude this is pseudo effective. But unfortunately, we don't have this condition for this. So we need to uh, change, change this, this E a little bit. So we, we, we recall that we already know. Uh, we already know that minus kx plus n times f is ample. So, so we can take that E equals to tx1. Uh, direct sum with n o x n f. So then the the c one of e is just this. So so c one of e is n f. And uh, uh, e is just uh, uh, because this is uh, this is generically n f by theorem, and this is n f. So this is also generically n f. So this implies that uh, C2 of E is pseudo-effective, so by Miyakov theorem. So, so then, then we, can we can compute this very easily. So this is just a C2 of x plus C1 of x, so C1 of x times n times f. So this part is C2 of x uh, plus, uh, so minus k x, so times n times f. And we can find such, so I, I will just write here. Oh, sorry. No. So we, again, we, 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 we use uh, this, this divider example. And uh, we use this ample divider times this pseudo-effective cycle. So we know that uh, minus kx plus nf times c2 of x uh, minus n times kx times f. This is non-negative. Non and we can compute that uh, we have this part. So minus k times c2 x. And this part is plus n times c2 f. And this part is uh, plus n times k f square. And this part is 0. So this is n 0. And uh, again, we use that the fact that uh, f is smooth step as well. So this part is smaller than 11. And this part is smaller than 9. So, so we conclude that minus kx times c2 x larger than minus 20n. And by this lower bound and, uh, and the obvious limero, we can conclude that, so actually, uh, we know that uh, ri smaller than 24 times uh, plus this. Yeah, and, and we have a bound for Cartier index, and we are done. Yeah, I think I, I will stop here. So what what do you mean by other other conditions? Uh, there are many uh, property of similarity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only only if, if the condition of the Goldstein index mm -hmm. satisfies, then the any kind of similarity. 
uh, yeah, I think by this theorem we know that x is bounded. So I mean, so there, I think the there are only finite many types of the singularities. Yeah. If that is what you mean, right? Uh, so, so, so in this case, we have only terminal singularities. Uh -huh. So, so if we bound the the Gronstein index, we know that uh, they are only finitely many, right? So by yeah, it's quotient singularity or the yes, 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 yeah, yes, yes. 